fifth grade, my dad and mom came into my room and sat me down on my bed and said, Danielle, we're moving to a different city, which means you'll have to switch schools. Fifth grade, when I was not aware of the realities of being a teenager. Fifth grade, the year my entire life changed. Hello, my name is Daniel Lee Jaws, but a lot of you know me as Daniel, Dan, or Danny. I came into Appleby two years ago as I joined the class of 2018 in Upper Two. Before I get into my time here at Appleby, I would like to rewind back to the sixth grade, the year that I now refer to as, let's pretend that never happened. I'm an international student who comes from Saudi Arabia. More specifically, I moved to a city in Saudi Arabia called Abqaiq from Calgary in third grade. This move was fairly seamless, however, coming from negative 30 degrees weather in Calgary to a whopping 50 degrees weather in Saudi is something that I'm still not used to to this day. I made friends, I had a class size of only seven kids, and I had no worries in life. Why would I? I was eight. But everything changed when my parents told me that we were going to be moving to a different city. At the end of fifth grade, I moved to Dahran, which is the biggest international compound in Saudi Arabia. A compound, for those of you who don't know, is basically a tiny America within a desert. In Dahran, my class size quickly jumped from a mere eight kids to about 140 kids. The little Donny thought of this as a positive. Hey, that's just 100 more kids that I can become friends with. But of course, it didn't exactly go that way. Quickly, I learned about cliques, having more than two girls in a class, having different teachers for different subjects, and all of this was coming at me way too fast. In fact, I hated Dahran when I first moved. I had no friends, almost no one even bothered to say hello to me, and at times, I would get picked on. I was so overwhelmed that it made me completely unable to make new friends, as I was too shy to talk to anyone. And honestly, I thought the entire world was out to get me. This feeling stuck with me until I was in the eighth grade, when my one and only friend in sixth grade, my best friend, started to drift away from me and hang out with the group of people that I always admired. They were funny, played video games like I did, and enjoyed each other's company to no end. Looking back at it, there was only one reason that I was able to get past these tough times, opening up. Not to my parents, not to guidance counselors, but to people my age that were comfortable with sharing emotions. But more on this later. Despite this terrible feeling of hopelessness I felt for the first two years there, I ended up becoming friends with those people I admired and had honestly the best high school year of my life, including my time here at Appleby. When I moved here in the 10th grade, I'd be lying if I said I actually enjoyed my first year as a Blue Dog. In fact, not only did I not enjoy it, it was quite possibly the worst year of my life. Not because of homesickness, not because of the culture shock, but because of the complete unwillingness for students to put themselves out there for me. And yes, I understand that it has to be a two-way thing, but honestly speaking, only a couple of people really came up to me to even greet me. But despite that, I just kept my head held high and tried not to give up or let this get to me like it did, to me, like it did in the first few months in Dahran. Days passed, week, weeks passed, and I was still unable to feel like I belonged to this community where it seemed like the norm was for people to assimilate into it easily. Maybe I was just very bad at being the new kid or something. This was especially hard when I was way too scared to say or do anything. I didn't know who to talk to about how I was feeling. So for the most part, I would talk to my friends back in Dahran. I always wondered why it always seemed so much easier to talk about anything with my friends back home. And this year, I realized why. This reason is reflected through a presentation we heard earlier this year by Jordan Exani, where he essentially made an app that allowed people to type anonymously about how they truly felt, and he would be able to put those messages on the board for everyone to see. When I was, when I was in Saudi, if this presentation were to be done, then most people would not be surprised. These feelings that so many of us have were so easily shared amongst ourselves to the point where people are like, whoa, it's been like 24 hours and you haven't talked about yourself. Are you okay? Talk to me. Sure, it got annoying at times, especially since I would have those days where I just wanted to be alone, but these relationships that don't hide how we are truly feeling always ended up being the friendships that I valued the most. So when I was thrown in this environment, which was so different than that of Saudis, I was confused, lost, and honestly, other than the few people I would talk to, I never really felt like this place was home. In Jordan's presentation, looking around the gym, it was amazing to see just how many people seemed absolutely shocked with what was on the board. And I was sitting there, and I was even more shook that people were that shocked. We live our lives every day thinking that we are alone when it comes to feeling down and feeling like it'll never get better. But there are so many people in our lives that we turn to help us not feel that way. These friendships that we have are so heavily based on entertainment and rarely, every th um, and rarely ever about things that prevent us from shifting our center of gravity forward, as David Gao said in his speech. 
So for me, coming here and having barely anyone to turn or talk to about how I was feeling was so strange. Sure, I could talk to people back home, but until I can have people in my day-to-day -day life where I can laugh over the dumbest things, like that one time in econ class when Anki genuinely had no idea that 25 cents is called a quarter because it's 25% of a dollar, or when, <laughs> or when Anki and I sent an email to all of the boarders yesterday. <laughs> and until I can have people that I can get I can also get real with, like when I was ranting to the deck 2.51 boys about that time when Mr. Telling checked my room an hour after late lights and caught me watching Netflix. Until I can have these people in my life, I just feel very uncomfortable. Talk to each other. That's what friendships are for, the good times and the bad times. When I submitted my application for this chapel speech earlier this school year, I still wasn't too fond of this place. It was so frustrating that I spent so many days and nights in a place and never really felt like it was home. However, now more than ever, I don't feel that way about Appleby at all. I grew a lot as a person. I made so many mistakes, I physically would not be able to finish telling them to all of you, even if I had a couple of hours. But I realized one of my biggest mistakes, and I'd like to share that with you today. I spent a lot of time trying to get everyone to like me. And by a lot of time, I mean a very long time. Every single day was an emotional battle trying to make friends, and yeah, here and there, I would feel good about where I was at, but for the most part, I was just getting disappointed again and again. It drains you. Every day was just worse and worse, and I would want nothing more than to just go back to Saudi, where I know I wouldn't have to deal with this kind of stuff. There were so many days when I was on the brink of calling my parents to tell them to send me back. Obviously, I didn't go through with it, but whenever I felt this way, I was at rock bottom. Earlier this year, I finally ended up talking to my parents about this, and my dad said something my dad said something that was the solution to my biggest mistake. He told me that out of a thousand people, you'll probably find 10 that are the real ones. And I can't even begin to fathom how blind I was in this entire situation. Since the beginning of my time in Appleby, I was so caught up in trying to get everyone to love me that I completely disregarded so many people that were always there for me. This doesn't mean that I've completely stopped trying to be friendly with everyone because I realized that you have the ones that you'd ride or die with and then those that you would only say hi to in the hallways. But kindness above all else does not take effort nor is a burden. My dad's words stuck with me. They still stick with me, especially now more than ever. I appreciate these people so much and I finally don't feel the burden of trying to get everyone to love me. I wish I could put these feelings into words. I was always so upset. But after that talk, I don't even remember the last time I was upset about this problem. I hope that if you feel this, this way as well, you can change your outlook on the situation. To the people that have been there, for me since the beginning. I'm sorry for not realizing this sooner. You know who you are and how much I value all of you. Time to be super cliche. Senior ones, I hope you cherish the people that are there for you. And I hope that you realize that your ride or dies would absolutely have no problem with helping you with anything that seems to be bothering you, either big or small. Fellow senior twos, we got five months left. Although living together is amazing, I think we've all started to realize that we can get very annoyed by each other at times. We've all gone through this journey together, and I think that if there's one thing we should definitely not do is to take that for granted. Let's end our journey with a bang. We've been through a ridiculous amount of good times and bad, but I think we should just enjoy each other's company until it's over. If there's anything you take away from my speech today, it's that friends are much more than people to give you a good laugh every now and then. They're here for you. If you feel down, talk to them. It isn't a burden to them, nor should it be to you. Be friendly, be kind, and love everyone that really do, does care about you whether that is a couple of people or a lot of people. My school in Dahran took a while to grow on me. Appleby took a while to grow on me, but it finally did. And I couldn't be more grateful for everything I've been through. Now, time to do something that I absolutely despise doing in 10th grade, but completely love now. Please rise and sing hymn 578.